Joe Longthorne and Karen Lee Burnett, Faith, Part 1 of 2. Now, we all know that Joe was enchanted with Karen's fabulous vocal talents, so much so, he asked that they meet. He invited Karen and her mum to visit his dressing room at the Palladium. They did. They spoke for quite a while. Joe asked for a copy of her first album for his mum. Tell, she'll love it. Another first, he didn't simply allow his assessment of her talents to be published in his tour brochure, he insisted on it. Finally, Karen is the only female singer he was to allow to support him on tour. Tell, he'd say, four songs on track. Joe was desperate to introduce Karen to the nation, and with your support, we'll fulfill Joe's dream. Our aim has always been to provide the very best entertainment for you, so in future we'll feature both Joe and Karen. Joe famously said of his prodigy, Karen can stand tall amongst all the greats of the past. And may I personally add, she stands head and shoulders above all but the very greatest. It's been the highlight of my life to have known and produced for them both. I do hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Forthcoming feature, a human interest story, unique and enthralling, unlike any other, entitled The Karen Lee Burnett Story. Having directed and produced both Joe Longthorne and Karen Lee Burnett, I'm in the privileged position of being able to produce this remarkable combined story. After accidentally discovering Karen on YouTube, after 10 years, contact would be appreciated at this crucial time. I've tried to explain by contacting you on Messenger, Terry Lodge. Current telephone number 07301 107744 or alternatively email me at Terence Lodge 06 at gmail.com Faith, however, adopts many forms in the life of Joe Longthorn MBE. So become acquainted with Joe's famous five Fs.
firsthand the strength, resilience and fortitude obtained by having unquestioning faith. This is one such story. I was God's witness for the majority of Joe's 31 year uncomplaining and courageous struggle against three different and deadly forms of cancer. He was gripped by his first encounter with cancer in the form of lymphoma. No one realised at this time that over the course of the next 31 years, much worse was to follow. Not that he would ever allow his condition to deny the music-loving public of the world any of his considerable talents. Within three years, he was bringing joy to 12 million viewers on his weekly TV specials. That's far more than the X Factor today. It was inspirational for everyone who witnessed it. A truly humbling experience. And you love me too. Your thoughts are just for me To set my spirit free I'm happy that you do The book of life is free Once your page is read All this life is dead that is my belief And yes, I know How lonely life can be Shadows follow me And the night won't set me free Joe would never allow his condition to slow him down. Now allow this modest man to reveal his own story in his own words. Well, I'm joined now by Joe Longthorne, who's uh, not too well at the moment. <laughs> Joe, let's not beat around the bush. Yeah. You've had cancer for quite some time, 14, 14 years. 14 years, so yeah, I've um, really, uh, and over the years I haven't been too bad because the first 10 years, which is good news for people that do have like lymphomas and things. They, so they, they kept me going on, on, on oral treatment, a, a, a treatment called carambosol, but obviously we can't go into because everything's different. But for 10 years, it seemed that kept things going. Then I went on to another form of treatment, um, which actually kept things going for a shorter while. And it's only this last year things have started to, it's changed from lymphoma to a disease now that's called um, lymphatistic, chronic lymphatistic leukaemia. And it's a form of aggressive leukaemia. Aggressive leukaemia, yeah. I mean, Joe's been suffering from chronic lymphatic leukaemia for 
a good number of years now and he's had several different types of treatment. He's recently con tre completed treatment with a program called Campath, which is a, an unusual antibody treatment, to which he's had a partial response. Um, he will need some further treatment, as I've explained to him, although we hope to be able to postpone this at least till he's finished his summer season in Blackpool. Um, he will need some further chemotherapy, and if that's successful, we would consider the option of a bone marrow transplant for him. Obviously, over the 14 years, you've managed to cope with it, but um, it's actually now hit you in the middle of what is a tour for you, isn't it, here in Blackpool? Well, yes, it has. Fortunately, I'm, I'm in Blackpool here, and I'm, I'm being treated under the fantastic team of doctors uh, um, by Paul Kelsey, who's here in Blackpool at, at the uh, Oncology and Haematology Unit. And they've been very good to me. Only this last, this last eight months, it's creeped up and got more on me, you see. And, and perhaps doing the, t doing the summer season spectacularly, which we started. And we've had a great seven weeks. Um, Despite his illness, Joe now, courageously produced the week. most spectacular summer season show seen in Blackpool for 30 years.
Only during the final week was he overcome by his ever worsening condition. So last night's performance on Sunday night's performance, I, I sort of came off stage and I was due for to go in the hospital the following morning, Monday, just to have a, a blood, routine blood check. But I knew in arts of arts, I thought I was a bit... So anyway, the doctor said to me, I'm sorry, we're going to have to start the treatment as quick as we can. Problems that Joe's trouble with at the moment is enlarged and swollen lymph glands. Um, the swelling of glands in the neck is quite a common problem in patients with chronic lymphocytic leukaemia. Because what has happened is, it's not a nice thing, but the glands here, I've got some huge glands, in fact, under my chin it looks like a, an egg box with half a dozen eggs in it. Under it, it's a bit, uh, and I've got a dreadful thing that's come under here, like a real sort of, you know, and so now it's got to the stage whereby, you know, people say, and like my mother said to me, God bless you, she said, look, the thing is, Joe, you can push yourself and push yourself. If you push yourself too far, it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long way, to, it's twice as far to come back. In other words, you can actually bend yourself out, which doesn't help treatment, does it, really? Well, I just leave him and he gets on because he's so determined, as we've just mentioned, himself. So it's how he feels. If I thought that for one minute that he didn't, you know, he upset me that I didn't want him to do it because I thought he was too ill, but he isn't. He's wonderful in himself at the moment. It's just a matter of getting on with his treatment and affecting, you see. But as I say, this is the first week, so next week he starts his second one, I believe it's on Monday, and then from then on he'll be doing so many weeks. So they said, no, you must stop the show, which has gutted me. Because, because I've, had, I mean, I've met so many wonderful people. Our young dancers, they've got twelve dancers: Johnny Casson, Gary Levine, uh, 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 wonderful on the violin, everything. He's a fabulous guy. This young girl, Killy Ampson, and all these young people. So they look forward to being in the big show. And I feel somewhere that, that like, and not only mentioned that the crew and the band, I seem to, I feel like I've let them down. Do you know what I mean? Because we only had a week to go, and between me and you, I thought I could have actually covered this week, but. The specialists have said, no, we, we want, you want you in. But I do feel gutted about the act because it hasn't happened, happened before to me where I've had to sort of let people down, really. And I don't think anybody would think that you're letting them down. I think there's quite an obvious reason why you can't be on stage mm. with only a week to go, and I'm sure that's understandable. Yes. From your own point of view, you've now come to 14 years. You're, you've had to take it easy. Yes. Uh, you are being seen by the doctors. Yeah. What's actually going through your mind about your years as an entertainer? Oh, well, I've had a, mar I've had a marvellous time entertaining. Ever since I was five years old, I've had a... It's been a sort of, if you like, professional since I was that age, because after my first talent competition, I was hooked into the entertainment business. But I think I would have been anywhere. I think I was born to, to be in it, if you know what I mean. I come from a travelling family, orcas and, you know, tinkers and things. And there's a lot, a lot of singers in the family and, and people and comedians, would you believe? I've, I've played Las Vegas and I've played the Albert Hawley, I've played the Palladium. I've done eight royal varieties, eight variety shows for, for, for the royals and things, which I enjoy doing. And it's not because it's tickets to rad, it's because all these people are connected with charities. And charities, especially like the National Health the way it is now on its knees, it needs more and more people helping. And charity is a good thing. Charity is a part of community. And I've always said it, what's wrong in dipping in your pocket and giving a few quid, as long as you know where it's going to? And it's only through money that, that things like, dreadful things like AIDS and leukaemias and nervous dispositions and people of all other sort of qualities of life they can't get because they're ill can be sorted out. And I believe it's through research. But you've been able to... Uh, run parallel your charity work and your entertainment work really with the, through the Variety Club. I mean, you were chosen as their most promising artist yes. back in 1983. So Joe is the only recipient of all three of Variety Club's prestigious awards, Newcomer, Silver and Gold Awards. So you've actually been able to merge the two quite happily, haven't you? Well, I have. I mean, well, I have. I mean, I think charity, I was saying to my producer, that Terry, that... Uh, Charity is a big thing, and I, and I intend to do a lot more um, when I get right. This treatment that's involved now, it means I've got to go in for... for I'll probably go in hospital at the um, Victoria Hospital here with the doctor, and I'll be in there for probably for a week for a test on this chemotherapy. Because I've had, I've had Campasol, which did a great, a great deal, because a lot of people listening, because it it's like a magic bullet thing. Well, it got rid of everything and put the blood right, but the glands. 
So and I can't check the chest infections I've got off. So now it's moved further down. Yeah. But it, this the treatment for me. I, I've got a few pals that were in the hospital, um, and they've walked out. One's John uh, James Bond, and we had it because we used to have a laugh with him. And he's walked out perfectly with the Campos treatment. It worked for him. It either works, it doesn't. Another guy's had it. Bang! It's a new American thing, and it's worked. But for me, unfortunately, it only went so far. So now we're going to try what's called the chop, which means not a bone marrow transplant, but, but um, a, a, an aggressive amount of chemotherapy. I've, I've played Las Vegas and I've played the Albert Hall, I've played the Palladium. Thank you. When you walk through the storm, Hold your head up high And don't be afraid of the dark At the end of a storm there's a golden sky And the sweet silver song Of love Walk on Through the rain Walk on through the wind Though your dreams be tossed and
that's all really I know. But you're limited to speak to um, Dr. Kelsey any time you want because he's, he's a he, you know he, he's a guy that like a lot of um, people I know like Professor Child in Leeds, I was with for a long time Leeds LGI. He, he was saying it's, you know that it's the it, it's it's the finding out what the causes are, which is the way to get through to this. And the only way that can do that is money. So one tries to get as much as you can, don't you? possible dream to fight the unbeatable foe to bear with unbearable sorrow to run where the brave dare The unrightable wrong To love Pure and chaste from afar To try When your arms are too weary To reach The unreachable star That one man scorned and covered with scars still stones with his last ounce of courage. I think it's always very difficult to put a prognosis onto any individual. In most patients, chronic lymphocytic leukemia has a good prognosis, and the majority of patients um, will live for many years with their disease. And in fact, in many patients, it will be stable and need no treatment whatsoever. Unfortunately, in Joe's case, he has it in a rather more aggressive form, which is, you know, has been difficult to treat. And I think. If it doesn't respond to chemotherapy, then I think the outlook could be not very good. So certainly not giving up. Oh no, you can't. You, you've, you've got to try and keep on going because the brain works wonders, and you know, and if you if you, if you have the right attitude for it, I think that really helps you as well. So they do, and they help me, and they send some lovely gifts and poems and things. It's 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 more than fans. It's a friendship thing with them all, really. I think they have done everything for me. I mean, so that's where the, it comes from. You know, we had after I did one of your shows before on this program, elderly lady sent two thousand pounds to the to the hospital in, um, to, to our LDI to, to, to Professor Child um, for for the uh, Friends of Leukemia Trust. You know, because we've always got to keep these things going because the nationals like, you know, it's I mean it's ridiculous. But there again, it's expensive for all these things. People what say, oh, do good and do good and do good as they make me sick. They ought to, then people ought to do a bit more good, because only by doing good and helping others, helping your fellow man, 
get through such illnesses, like I've said, nervous dispositions, cancers, AIDS. This is what I think, you know, that we as human beings, we should be doing, helping each other. But you're not sort of sitting back on your laurels, even though you are poorly yourself. You're actually um, looking forward. And you're actually writing, apparently, an autobiography? Yes, I am. I'm writing an autobiography with the Upper Terry, and um, one of our friends from Yorkshire Television is going to be uh, actually writing it. But it's an autobiography. And Joe's thought of the title, it's Sugar in the Morning. And Sugar in the Morning is the first song that Joe ever sang on stage. And uh, when he won his first competition uh, in the parks when he was four years of age, you know. Um, it's tremendous. It's got tragedy and triumphs, laughter and tears. It's unbelievable. It, it's lived two lives in such a short time. It would make wonderful, wonderful television. It really would. And that's what we want to do with it eventually. Alan's a, a journalist, as everybody knows, a wonderful journalist. I've done all the research. And Joe himself and the family have contributed already, and with some other people to see yet. I'm on, I'm on a, doing the book for hey. me, I really am. I just want to get a dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> I'll need a chicken, I'll need a chicken dictionary. I only saw that, the, the uh, life story, you know, about, about, well, from now, I saw it about eight months ago. Yeah. The first time I've seen it. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. wasn't it? Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. That one, Ed. 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 And the different raggle taggle gypsy or sort of thing, and, and the rise to, to sort of um, fame, if you like. Someday, somehow, we'll find a new way of
Tell us about the royal family. Well, they're, they're all fabulous. I did a royal show for the Duke of Edinburgh. I did one for the, a royal variety show for the Queen Mother, one for the Queen, one for the, cho one for the children. Ladies and gentlemen, Britain's top vocal impressionist, Joe Longthorne. You are the sunshine of my life, yes. That is why I always stay around. Oh, and you, you're the apple of my eye. And forever you will stay in my arms. Well, I feel like this is the baby. I'll always stay around you Ah, oh, that is why I'll always I'll be around you Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Shirley Bassett Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to now introduce you to, if I may, one of the greatest stars ever to come out of this country, Des O'Connor <laughs> and friends. To all the girls I've loved before, to all the world, him along. I'm getting on him on It's Julio To all the girls I once caressed 
upon a star The main attraction You couldn't buy a seat I was the celebrity Celebrities Would die to meet I've had every accolade Bestowed on me And so you see If I'd never seen you love it all Though I have to learn to act like I'm above it all Everything I did the world applauded me Once upon a star Frame citations hang on every wall I've got a scrapbook full of quotes I can There was a time when I thought all the world belonged to me And so you see I never sing another song I'll take another, another bow I would get by But I don't know oh, And I also did a Prince of San as well. So, and I love them one. I think they do a great, great deal of good work for the country. And I mean, I always said, imagine if the Queen said, "Oh, that's it, then packing it in," and she moved. She, she, 
she decides to move next door to me in Bishburn, it'd still be the Queen, wouldn't it? You know, she's still the Queen, and I think they do a great deal of, deal of help, and the Commonwealth over the years has been a good thing. Well, leave them alone, mm. you know. Can I just focus in on, on your faith? Um, how important has your faith been through this period Very of time? Very much. I, I, when I, I started at the Catholic school, when I was, because I'm a Catholic, years ago, but at, at a very early age, I found Jesus Christ. I found Jesus when I was about 15. The, 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 the Catholic school didn't do it for me. I found it in another church with, with no pressure on me. They used to throw about the catechism and things like that, Catholics and things. But I found Jesus by myself, if you know what I mean. I, you know, I never became a born, born again, but, but I, I have a firm belief in Jesus Christ. Has he helped you during this period? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, he has. In fact, his book should be there. I usually have a Bible, and when I get a bit low, I, I look at the Bible, and, and I get a lot of comfort from that. Yeah, I do. I do. Because um, I just do. And also, I appreciate, of course, other religions, and they have their, um, their gods, and that. I believe that's the case. I think that, in my opinion, there's only one God, but I think that, oh, that one God has a good... It does good impersonations, because you've got then the... Because you have, you have, you have, you have you, Muhammad, the prophet for, for the Muslims, who I know quite a little bit about because my brother-in-law uh, was Arabic, who I loved to, loved to death. He's no longer with us, Abdul Nagid Shaya Taha. He was from Aden, but came on a banana boat in 1950. And I got such friends with him, that's another story. But so my religion is quite wide, really. I appreciate everybody's sort of um, uh, take on to, to, to what does them, what, what's good for those people. You have to take one step at a time, one day at a time at the moment. Yes. I mean, you've got these operations to go through. But you have to keep going ahead. There's no point in me saying, oh, and, you know, I mean, least of all, we've got to pay the rent, haven't we? For me, I've still got to go giving this message of entertainment, and it's wonderful when you're on stage and you've got 2,000 people out there and they've come to see and they've all got themselves dressed in ties and nice skirts, and you go on and you give them, you know, they've come to see, and you can go on and, and take them out of the cells, try and take them out of the wars and things that's going on, all these dread, dreadful things that's happening for an hour and a half. is a wonderful thing to do, so let's do it. If this treatment goes well, and from what, what I can gather from a, a lot of people, a lot of people have pulled through and got through it, there's no reason why I should not be doing any more tours and bookings. Well, Joe, we wish you a speedy uh, consultancy and a speedy operation and a speedy recovery. Thank you. Hurrah. I've had my share of life's ups and downs, but fate's been kind. Downs have been few And I guess you could say That I've been lucky Well, I guess you could say That it's all of you If anyone should ever write my life story For whatever For whatever reason there
Faith, however, adopts many forms in the life of Joe Longthorn, MBE. So become acquainted with Joe's famous five Fs. Joe always confided, in fact made no secret of the fact that his inner strength was derived from the following. Faith. Family. Friends Fans Flowers
all in all, the cancer's gone. And which is remarkable, Yet, really. Unfortunately so for Joe, it was that, is another all, false I've got to tell you, Joe, to endure. To, to, you know, be, be truthful that we can't, we can't see any more cancer. However, what we're going to do is still go down the bone marrow um, path. In fact, I'm seeing a Dr. Lucas in Manchester on the 24th uh, of this month, and he'll be letting me know because even though the cancer set gone at the moment, it's not eradicated altogether, and in some cases it, it creeps back. So, um, so we're going to go further down the road anyway and look, because after all, we've we, we've had a great response um, with the bone marrow situation. People have been fantastic, not just for me, but for all over the country. And I'd say here and now, you know, that, uh, that, that, that you know, and people want to give the blood. You know, they go in and give the blood and everything. I know, I know they need, we need more um, blood donors and things. But So really, I'm doing really fine, really. I mean, I'm, I'm picking up. And, but what they are doing is they're going to go down the road even further, Alan, so that, so that even this, this cancer sort of gone, it may just creep back somehow. And this goes for everyone. They're, they're, they're sort of going down the, down the road that if it does come back, we'll go for the bone marrow transplant, at the, it, it get, get it ready in case. And it's fantastic because we've, we've, um, we've had so many people uh, from all over the world, would you believe? We've got Adam from Germany, America, Wales and everything. And we've got, they've actually got now two sort of exact matches, which is, which is incredible really to get like two exact matches, you know what I mean? And that, 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 the chances of that happening must be... Well, millions, millions to one, aren't they? I mean, it's just it's incredible, really. And when you think of it, the people, if somebody's going to, you know, somebody will say, look, I'll go and have an operation. And for the people, for the donors, you know, it's not that easy to have, um, to have any sort of transplants. And, you know, to go in and, and to say, well, I'll go and give that chap a chance of, or whoever it may be, a, a chance of life again is a remarkable, wonderful, wonderful, thing to do I mean I mean it's changed my life that just that action from another human being actually doing that as sort of that's been remarkable because it already it's changed it's sort of I've got a different attitude if you like on things but I mean you, this just is part of your this is part of being Joe Longthorne you've never ever set yourself up as, up as being somebody who goes here goes there raises money for charity this is just something that you you have to do it's just part of your your life isn't it well it is indeed i mean you've got you, i mean i'm not i mean we've got people out there that you know i'm not going to go too like spiritually or, or but i mean i believe in vocations in life and I, I mean i believe the older i get the more and more i need, i was in show business you know so i should have been a fireman or should have been a this that and the other and equally the wonderful jobs and things to do and vocations of course I, but, I, but, I, but when I look back I think no he was more and more and so I get ill and, and so you say well who else is feeling like this well I am well let's help you out or let's you know it could be you know, it could be I mean it could be it could be nervous disposition that's one of the worst things in the world is there's people with, with nervous dispositions or any illness at all when it dra drags a human being down and you have hurt and you have pain you know I feel as a, as a human being it's my duty almost to, to help that person it's, it's like not just our but millions of people around the country do I mean, not only entertainers either but certainly people in businesses and things and I think that's what can be in a society a little bit lacking I think sometimes when uh, when people can get together and as, as human beings and sort of almost eradicate uh, in other sort of situations like, like, like they're doing now with the, with the, with the, um, the dreadful blood disorder um, Diabetes. Diabetes. Uh, now that's. I was watching on the news that um, there's a big. Uh, seems like there may be a, a cure down the road for that, which is an, an enormous release for not just the the patients, but for people around the patients. This is another thing I found in hospital. Though when you are, when that word cancer comes up, it frightens everybody. And as we know now, most can be treated, and most cancers can be kept in check and managed, which is, is a great thing. But I always feel sorry for people around them, like families. Uh, you know, partners, wives, loved ones, they, they seem to go through it. And when I go now and see to the hospital here and to the day unit and see new people, new patients coming in with their families, I worry that you, you think, you know, you know, it's not just the patient that, has a, that, has a, that goes, can, can is, go through a trying time, but certainly the families seem to go through more. Because what happened to me was quite funny and it was funny because the first time we, we, the doctor said, look, we're going to try and find her, um, her, uh, her, her donor for the bone marrow. So they said, first of all, we try our siblings. So I've got, I've got two wonderful sisters, Anne and Elizabeth, Elizy, and, uh, and my brother John. Is that, is that right? Yeah. There's four of us all together. 
So they all came down to Blackpool naturally, immediately when the doctor asked, but unfortunately we never had a, we never, there was not a match. I think it's because one of my sister's legs was too short. No, but we didn't have a match, but it seemed really funny because I thought, well, if you're not going to get a match here, we're going to get a you know, match. And I thought, well, this is definitely Cairns now. And anyway, we had a good laugh in the, uh, in the surgery and it was acting about other things. And, but that never, that came through, it didn't, didn't there was no match there. But um, you would have thought there was, wouldn't you, really? You know, but the, but um, anyway, we meant lights of it and had a, had a laugh. And but lo and behold, uh, eight and a half weeks later, it came in that there was um, a possible um, ma matches. Where did you get your strength from? Well, when I, I was um, I was brought up Catholic um, um, in a region. I went to a couple of different Catholic schools and things, but I didn't get any um, re religion. It seemed to be at that point and faith and all the rest of it. It didn't hit me, that, you know, even though it was all around you, especially what with catechisms and things. And I didn't could be bothered with that like that. Or well, this is what that is. I didn't find my uh, sort of uh, with, with you know with Jesus Christ um, until long after I left school, long after I got out of there. And so I have a, I have, um, you know, I believe in Jesus Christ, and I, you know, I have faith in the Lord, and I, I uh, you know, and, all, and I respect all religions, and uh, you know, for me there's only one God, but I'm sure for other people there's only one God as well. It might be the same God, but uh, but uh, I think that um, that sort of helps me. And when when I'm really, when I've been really down, especially when you're real, you're saying, you know, and I've done this on the floor, etc. God knows what, and ask him, when's this going to end? And Jesus Christ, will you pl please help me? You know, and this doesn't always, you know, always with illness either. This can be other things, but this, it, it, when, where I, and do you know, it, it does come, it just, your prayers are answered, and you know, next minute, you know, you're off to sleep or something. So, so, I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm in touch there. Jesus is there for me. Thank you. 
In part two, find out much more, especially Joe's poignant tribute to his three life-saving doctors.